Hello and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Morgana here and today I'm here to share this simple beginner friendly video demo of how to paint a stormy sky with lightning using watercolour. But first a very quick reminder that Lois Davidson's fantastic art book Landscapes in Watercolour Techniques and Tutorials for the Complete Beginner is available now to order from all good booksellers. Now back to the video. I'm beginning this demonstration with my lightning already drawn out. All you need to do is sketch it softly in pencil over your chosen piece of watercolour paper, then trace the lines over with masking fluid. You can make it as simple or complex a shape as you like. You can do either landscape format as I've done here, or portrait format to frame the scene a little differently. I'm being guided by this reference photo today, which I downloaded from the free use image website pixabay.com, which has a wonderful archive of free use reference photos, including a lot of beautiful lightning storms. This is just one of them. The shape and simplicity of it really appealed to me, which is why we're going to try and recreate something similar today using watercolour. After allowing the masking fluid to completely dry, I'm now using a little bit of masking tape to section off the sea from the sky, which just makes it that much easier to paint a nice, clean, straight horizon line. I want to paint the sky wet in wet, so the first step is to wet this top area really thoroughly with clean water. For this moody pale storm grey colour, I mixed together some ultramarine, some Payne's grey and a little bit of sepia with plenty of water. Those are going to be the only three colours that we're using for this painting today. I wanted this base layer to be quite light so that I had some colour already on the paper to work with when I paint in the darker storm clouds. For this part of the painting I switch brushes from the flat to a mop brush. I feel like for this kind of work the mop gives me slightly better control but um, this is all down to personal preference. I'm using a rich mix of the same three colours that I used before so that is again some ultramarine, some Payne's grey and some sepia all mixed together and I think this is just the loveliest sort of moody grey storm mix. As you can see I'm laying the colour on really quite thickly and darkly particularly up in this top left corner where the main storm cloud is gathering. Um, watercolour will also usually dry back uh, quite a bit lighter than you put it on, about 30% I believe uh, is a rough approximation, uh, which is just always worth bearing in mind when you want to paint using dramatic colours. Now to help our lightning bolt achieve the impression that it's glowing as it scorches its way across the sky, I'm using a damp brush to simply lift out a little of the dark paint while it's still wet. I'm not lifting too much as I don't want to take the paper all the way back to white or create any sort of hard marks. I just want to create this sort of soft sort of halo style glow around the lines of masking fluid. Now that that's done, it's time to remove this piece of tape and just clean up the edges before leaving the painting to dry. As I'm sure most of you are already aware, this is uh, one of the best ways to avoid getting unwanted runbacks and cauliflower marks that can sometimes appear or occur uh, during the drying stage of a wash. Once this section of the painting is fully dry, we can move on to creating the sea. Again, I'm using masking tape. This is more of a guideline than anything, and it does also mean that I don't have to worry too much about accidentally painting over the horizon line as I paint the water. But 
For the C, I'm going to use the same size 20 mop brush as I did before and a blend of the same three colours. And I'm making sure that I've picked up less paint than before on my brush. Um, so instead of fully saturating the mop brush with water and paint, I've only really half filled it, so to speak, so that I can now uh, loosely skim the brush, as you see here, across the textured surface of the watercolour paper. This is uh, cold press watercolour paper. Um, leaving behind this lovely uh, dry brush sparkle that looks just like the glow of reflected light dancing across the surface of the water. Once you've finished with this section, remove the tape and leave to dry again before moving on to the final stage. Painting a very simple headland in the foreground, which should just help bring the painting together. I'm using this uh, size 6 quill brush uh, for this today, but you can use any brush really that you enjoy painting with. Um, and a blend of dark colour. I chose again sepia and Payne's grey to continue the colour theme of the whole painting. And it means that we have... Um, achieved an entire painting here using only three colours, which is always rather fun. Now to add some simple yet effective texture into this foreground you can either blot in some small pale marks using kitchen paper or tissue or you can come in with a palette knife and gently scrape in some rocky shapes into the wet paint. Once you're happy with how the headland looks, simply leave it to dry, then remove the masking fluid from the lightning strike, take the paper off the board, and there we have it. This is the finished painting. So thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this beginner-friendly Stormy Sky demonstration. If you did enjoy it, then please feel free to check out the links below the video to mine and Lois Davidson's Patreon pages, where you'll find lots of similar tutorials to enjoy. Thanks again for watching everyone, wishing you all a very wonderful day and happy painting.